the difference between an entrepreneur and a manager and why you need to have a manager in your business. Guys, Kim here from Your Social Voice. And today I'm in probably a little bit different scenery than you've seen before. That's because I am in Ma'am Christie's office. That's her name, our manager. That's how she wants everyone to, to refer to her as. And now I was actually gonna have her sitting just next to me in the video today. However, she actually decided to wear her sports gear in. So she said, Kim, I don't wanna be in my sports gear. They call me Sporty Spice. I'm not in the video today. So you've just got me. But I want to talk to you about the difference between what an entrepreneur is and what a manager is. And one of the big differences and a couple of recommended readings that I'll give to you guys is anything by a guy called Gino Wickman. They've got a book called Traction, Rocket Fuel, and How to Be a Good Boss. They're all great, great books and they all operate on the principle of the entrepreneur operating system. And what they say and what they identify is generally speaking, there's two different types of people and that's what we're talking about today. You have really what we would call a visionary and what we would call a implementer, which is really the same as an entrepreneur and a manager. Because an entrepreneur, if we break that down, what that type of person is, is really someone who's thinking about the big ideas, who's always kind of got their head maybe a little bit in the clouds, where they're thinking about the long-term vision of the company. What's going to happen in the next one year, three year, five years? And they're really looking out for a big scope of the business. And then you have the manager, which is really more focused on the day-to-day -day operations, ensuring what's happening from today to tomorrow, to next week, to next month, to this quarter, to the financial year. They're still forward looking. However, they do have to be a, have the ability to manage and focus in on those key, key areas for the business. Now, why do you need both? Could you get away with just one or the other? Well, to shorten that down, depending on your business size, look, at some point in time, you are going to have to be a visionary and you're gonna to have to implement things yourself, right? That's just the way that it operates if you're a small business. However, what they recommend in those books and what I recommend to you is that as soon as possible, once your business starts to grow and cash flow allows and all those great things, is that you start to look at how do you bring in someone to help with implementation? How do you bring in someone to help manage operations? Because what you'll find is generally speaking that an entrepreneur is really good at selling, is really good at enrolling people in their vision, is really good at making things happen within the business, but not really executing in full on each specific project. So what do I mean by that? They aren't really the most ideal at getting things done or completed. They'll start a lot of things and a lot of things kind of end up half finished or they'll kick something off and then it won't work and they won't really assess why because their mind is thinking of and moving on to the next big thing, the next big project. And that's not right, wrong or otherwise, but what it is is something that you should focus on identifying going, well, in your business, are you the entrepreneur or are you the manager? And you can still be the manager and own the business, right? But that means you need to bring someone in to maybe a CEO or a general manager who's got the big vision and big goals. In ours, we probably work very well together, Christy and myself, because I, yes, I am good at coming up with the big ideas and the long-term vision of what we want to achieve, but I'm also good at executing and finishing off things in certain key areas of the business, like in our ads team, funnels, onboarding, and things like that. Whereas Christy's also really good at that, but she's also good at looking at long-term on a bigger scale, what that means for us in team members and things like that. So you really need to do have a good balance between those two key areas. And as soon as you can, I highly recommend getting someone in. Now, what sort of person is it? It's someone who has that attention to detail, who you know can complete tasks. And if you can, I highly recommend getting them to do several tests. So the two big ones that everyone recommends to, as a personality type test, to try and find out what their personality types are, how they relate to people, how the interactions happen, is a Colby test. K-O-L-B-E, not the cheese, right? And also a DISC assessment, D-I-S-C. Those two tests, whilst they may cost you a little bit of money, sometimes I think they, they run about 25 to $40 to get a test done. What will happen is if you actually get them completed, you'll find out the type of person that you are looking to have and, and bring into your team. And if you just even simply Google, you know, what disc personality suits a manager, what Colby test personality suits a manager, you'll very quickly find who you need to bring in because the worst thing that can happen is if you have two people that you would consider the entrepreneur in a business with big heads, egos, big ideas, big dreams, most of the time they will clash. Right? Because a lot of the times they'll come off and they'll go in different directions with what they're looking to do and achieve. I've seen it happen in many companies that we've helped and worked with is where if you have two entrepreneurs or two visionaries, 
not one person leading that charge, there can be a head clash. There can be a little bit of not non-cohesion within the business. And that's not really what you want because what happens is then things start to fall apart because everyone's coming up with these grand ideas and yes, we should go and do this and yes, we should go and launch this, but no one's actually executing and keeping track of that. Because generally speaking, if you think about it, the entrepreneur is a toddler right is a toddler going around the room chucking their toys everywhere building their spaceship saying that they want to be the first man on mars or whatever it might be and then the manager is the parent who comes in tidies up that mess puts it into an actual process or system that's actually going to work puts all the toys away and ensures that the household keeps operating so that's what you really need to think about and again, to revert back, like how do you do that? Well, you need to test people within your company and see what their personality types are like, right? The more that you can test and find out the people that you already have on your team, the better it's going to be. Or that's something that you get people to do before you even bring them in for an interview, unless you already have it in your team. So if you do those tests right and you find the right person who's the right culture fit, then you'll see that your business will have the ability to continue to move forward, to grow and scale, and you have the right team to support that. If you don't, you will keep butting heads because you might have two managers, you might have two entrepreneurs. If you have two managers on the flip side, what's going to happen is that um, there's not as much long-term thinking, vision, and planning. So things will keep ticking along, but you may find that the ideas, the strategies, the growth that you need to have happen is not as exponential as it should be. So we uh, just yesterday interviewed Brad Sugars, the CEO and creator and founder of Action Coach. He talked a lot about exponential growth and how that happens. And a lot of the time it is driven by the CEO, by the founder, by the entrepreneur, like the, I'll say like the whipping of it, right, of the company going forward. But there's five dis disciplines, there's five key areas of growth. And if they're not managed effectively, and the things aren't set up properly at the beginning, it can very easily form, can be set up on a house of cards. So do you want a house of cards for your business? Or do you want to have a strong, solid structure that allows you to grow? Right, you all know what happens with a house of cards. It gets to a certain point and then it collapses. But a, song, a strong, solid structure that you've created over time with the right team, with the right effectiveness, with the right people in your business, really allows you to be set up and structured for growth for the long term. So like I said, test your team, test yourself to find out and identify exactly where you fall into those spectrums so that you can see what you need to help to facilitate your business growing. And if you do that, you will set yourself up for success. And that's why I think that you need to identify the difference for you between an entrepreneur and a manager. And that is exactly why you need to bring a manager into your team to help with that cohesion. And also look, to be honest, sometimes entrepreneurs can be seen as a little bit grating, can be seen as a little bit frustrating for people to deal with because their personality is very forward focused and driven and they can occasionally override people's emotions, I would say. They normally have a pretty solid IQ, but their EQ is not that good. Look at Steve Jobs, look at Elon Musk. For lack of better words, both of them have been called assholes, right, in the way that they operate. And that's just because they have, I would probably say, a really solid level of IQ, but their EQ or the emotion and understanding of the culture within their businesses is probably not as good as it could be. Hence why they have great managers, they have other team members that can facilitate that for them. So guys, hopefully that has made sense to you today on why you need to have a manager and entrepreneur in your business and the difference between the two of them. If you did like this, please give us a little thumbs up uh, on the video below. Give us a comment, let us know what you thought, how we can help you more, what other content you wanna have because otherwise I'm just gonna keep doing these videos. But if you have any recommendations, be more than happy to address it for you guys. And always subscribe so that you can see these videos first before anyone else. Until next time, I'm Kim Barrett. You've been awesome. Adios.